Okay, we need to talk about something, but first, we need to go and get some food. I'm here to admit that I was wrong. And God knows nobody can do that on an empty stomach. Hello and welcome to the mukbang. So I've always known that meat probably wasn't the best for the planet. I think sometimes we all like to pretend that this is new information, but I've known for a while. And I had a lot of hesitations that were thoroughly unresearched. Like I made a big effort not to research those things and probably made a few of my vegetarian and vegan friends feel quite awkward in the process. But cutting down on my meat consumption was on my 40 before 40 list. If you wanna watch that, it's up here. Uh, and at the beginning of 2020, I gave up eating meat. Thank you. Thank you. Having read all the literature I have though, I am not yet vegan. This isn't clickbait. I will tell you at the end of the video the reasons why I'm not vegan. But it's been almost two years now of not eating dead animals directly. And I've learned a lot. One being, I do actually understand to some extent why the early vegans had a reputation for being a little bit snarky, a little bit short tempered, and maybe coming across a little bit tense because I've realized what a complicated and nuanced topic it is and how short of a window the world gives you to explain that in a conversation and a moment. There's a culture of being like, so why are you vegan? <laughs> and it's goddamn not possible to explain the meat industry and the systemic lies in 30 to 40 seconds. And so I do understand some of the animosity. And also this video isn't here to persuade you. I have not got all of the information and I just wanted to share how I have been feeling about giving up meat and whether I am progressing to a vegan diet because I know that the new year is coming up and it's something that people might be thinking about. So I'm just gonna share my thoughts, my feelings, my experiences, and we're gonna have a chat and maybe not wreck this hotel bed, maybe. Now this isn't a video to persuade you in any way. This is a video for me to share all of the reasons why I wasn't vegetarian or vegan before and why I now find those incredibly unconvincing past me. First reason was I didn't know any vegans, but I felt like I wouldn't like them if I met them. <laughs> now this is talking like 19 year old me probably, <laughs> but it's true. I think when you don't know anyone and it's not within your realms of observable habits, it's a weird thing and it's one of those hard things to talk about because it's not a personal choice in the same way that, oh, I just prefer wearing purple to pink. It's, oh, I don't like eating meat. Why don't you like eating meat? Because I, I believe that it's wrong. So you believe what I'm doing is wrong? No, but yes, but no. There is a, a certain binary there that when you talk about it, it can get people's backs up and I don't really know a way out of that apart from to treat it with nuance and grace but i also think that when i think about this idea of not liking the vegan community like eating the way that the planet was designed and the way our body is designed is attached to some kind of culture that also necessitates dancing certain kinds of clothing certain kinds of ways of speaking intersecting with various other identities like that should be a logical thing i guess also dictated with the fact that veganism by its nature was adopted first by the people who could afford it because it can be incredibly expensive depending on where you live. But I also think to myself, past Lena, when you're up to your knees in flood water and the world is on fire, are you really gonna answer to yourself, why don't you do anything? Oh, well, I didn't really like the vegans music. <laughs> I didn't really like their expressions, the way they said things. I think we need to sometimes remove our relationship with the community of veganism or our idea of a community around eating something that is an incredibly simple meal plan life and just to concentrate on your relationship to the facts. It can be helpful to be part of online communities when adopting new ways of thinking or lifestyles, but I genuinely don't think it's essential. And also I moved to a big city, I met more kinds of people and I met a lot of vegans. They were really fucking nice and didn't make it a huge part of their identity 
and just treated it like it was normal. Let me ask questions. And I realized that whether or whether or not I critiqued the vegan conversation or the vegan community shouldn't really have a relationship to whether I could make sense or not make sense of veganism. The next one, I'm okay with eating meat because I would kill an animal with my bare hands. <laughs> That's genuinely something I used to think and say sometimes aloud. And I genuinely, the more I read about it and think about it, think that that mentality comes from a pick me girl style attitude. This obsession with the relationship between masculinity and meat. By the way, I'm gonna leave loads of freaking resources downstairs because I'm not, I'm not gonna give you all the facts in this video or claim that I have a monopoly on the facts. I'm just gonna leave the links to what I've read and listened to. But the relationship between masculinity and meat is really fascinating. And the intersection of that as a woman and like wanting to be tough, tough enough to kill an animal, like that's a good thing. I was also thinking about this idea of like, when we're trying to describe a situation in which a person has been treated horrifically and the person responsible for it deserves to be reckoned with, um, we often use the phrase being treated like an animal. And when we say that, we're not thinking about Fido, who's the family pet who's been around for 10 years. Being treated like an animal is synonymous in our lexicon with being treated brutally. The idea that I'd want to be psychologically strong enough to stab something that has emotions and connections with other be beings and like mourns their young and can sometimes recognize themselves in mirrors and stuff. Like the idea that I'd want to be cool enough to be able to kill or something and then that would give me a reason to eat it is fascinating. Also all of the stuff that I read around mental health in slaughterhouses and how actually they set up these slaughterhouses in places where there is a huge job deficit and people who are on incredibly low income are forced to take these jobs even though it leads to a high suicide rate and a horrific mental health crisis is just fascinating. On top of the research that shows that serial killers often start by killing animals. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but you know when you're just like, it's so uncomfortable that you just ha like, your body has to let out like a little like, Ugh. this very basic idea we have of the hunter-gatherer seems like incredibly patriarchal, incredibly outdated, and kind of skews the reality that we live in. So Pasolina, I'm gonna have to veto you on that argument. Another one is that I really like me. Okay, my kingdom for a Cumberland sausage. Those were the golden years. Justifying my actions because I enjoy a thing, that there is a sensuous pleasure that I get from doing something that harms somebody else. I am not gonna extrapolate all of the parallels that that could <laughs> potentially be applied to, but I have kind of grown into this idea that extrapolating pleasures out of things isn't as narrow as we think it is. We don't have a very small amount of places we can find pleasure in this world. There's actually loads of different ways that we can enjoy things and be delighted by things, which is why like obviously we're all randomly allocated <laughs> cultures and races and countries and we, wherever you are born in the world you often have like a favorite food a favorite friend a favorite outdoor activity depending on what is available to you and those things become part of our identities yes but they only become favorites because they're available to us and we know that they're possible and also i had this huge revelation which should have been more apparent to me i guess when i stopped eating meat i wrote a note in my phone that literally just said did i ever like meat or did i just like salt bacon is essentially solid salt. And while salt in that measure isn't probably that good for you, those things can be replicated to an incredible extent. And I also realized that the things that I associated with meat were actually about the sauces and the ways it was cooked. The meat can taste quite bland on its own. It is the meals that I associate with meat that I really loved and they can taste quite similar. But again, just because you enjoy something in the same way that we've come to see that although fast fashion was hella fun, the people who provide it to us are, to put it kindly, <laughs> incredibly suspicious. Another one was that I would crave it too much. And it's actually incredible to me how much I didn't really, kind of because of the said salt reason. I feel like when you know why you're doing something and you've let, like you haven't like bent into pressure or rushed yourself, you genuinely believe it. It's so much easier to move on from it in the same way that when you're in a breakup, but you haven't really like resolved all of your questions or like made peace with um, a wish that won't come true or a future that 
has now been negated. But it's so much harder to stay away from that person. But because I feel like nobody pressured me, nobody rushed me, and I really came to it on my own. I had a chance to look up all the answers to the questions that I had. And boy, were they easy to find. And boy, were they thorough. And I also thought that it would be more awkward. And I feel like maybe the world has moved on a lot from when I was like 19. But now when I say, oh, I don't eat meat, I'm vegetarian. Nobody goes like, oh, quirky. Or like, tell me more about that. Or like, why? Like most people just haven't asked. Then they're either not interested or it's it's a lot more normal now, at, at least in the world I move through and I'm lucky to move through. But I just, I just, I guess my mind was still in like 2008, but like genuinely nobody cares to the point where I'm like, is anyone gonna ask me about the incredible research that I have in my back pocket? No, okay. Also the revelation, that you shouldn't have to answer any questions about your diet. You should just be allowed to have it. I feel like sometimes I thought about being vegetarian and trying to maybe move towards veganism, but I was scared that I wasn't ready for all the questions. Therefore, I didn't change my eating habits. But that just probably shows an incredible lack of boundaries because you should be able to pick what you eat and you shouldn't have to have an in this essay, I will TED talk style podium speech ready just so you can order a restaurant at a meal with your friends or go home to see your parents, you know? <laughs> I wish that I had known that I could change the way I ate without having to be a verbal advocate for it, just knowing that I know what I believe and what I've read. Another thing that I didn't think about was how it's not so much about morals of like clean or dirty, am I a vegetarian, am I not? I cut down on meat a long time before I actually like officially quit it. And one of the revelations for me was when I was reading about it, one of my friends was vegan and she was like, oh, every now and then I just want to eat like one fucking burger. Just one fucking burger. And I was like, well, mate, it's not about identity. It's about impact. So if there's one day a year where you want to eat a burger, give me a call, let me know. And I, a meat eater, won't eat any meat that day and the planet will have been impacted the same. <sighs> And I didn't, it didn't come to this, but I think it would have been cool that if I was, you know, earlier in my twenties and I was hesitant about giving up animal products, being able to like buddy with somebody and being like, okay, between us, between the two of us, we're gonna eat one vegan diet. <laughs> because that's better than both of us carrying on the way that we are. And if we don't feel like it's possible to give up completely, why can't people tag team? Explain that to me. <laughs> Another thing I didn't predict about giving up meat was, how much calmer it made me feel. And I've talked before about how massive policy change, big systemic shifts are needed, but taking on individual changes and inconveniences can one, change the conversation and the consumer demand with those of us able to do it, but also just internally align ourselves a little bit more. Like again, I just felt like every time I ate meat, I was gaslighting myself because I knew what the truth was and I knew what was actually going on in the world. But every time I sat down for a meal, I was like, switch it off. You imagine that. You didn't need to that. No, that's not for you. And so living more in line with reality makes me feel better. In the same way that when you break up with a person who you know is never going to be right for you, even though they give you the tinglys, still feels better even though you're devastated because you know you're living in closer alignment with reality. It just, for some reason, it made me feel calm. And I can't explain it. So Lena, if you're so passionate about this thing, why aren't you vegan? <laughs> As we know, veganism is an incredibly nuanced topic that nobody, vegans or non-vegans, can cover in a 40 to 50 second window in a conversation. And one of the nuances is that not everybody can do it. People have health things. A small amount of people, but people do. People have body issue things around meals and hard and fast rules and control. People also have access issues and financial issues. And it's only ever you, I think, who's gonna be able to honestly say, could I be vegan? And where my life intersects with those things, I'm definitely coming towards a point where I think that in the future I could be, but I'm also trying to not scare off the moody teenager in myself who's gonna throw their, pra their like toys out of the pram and be like, no, this is too expensive, this is too much hassle, this is ruining my relationship with food and the body that I've been trying to heal for decades. I'm not doing it anymore. So instead of throwing myself in at the deep end with veganism, especially because I started the pandemic 
real bad at cooking. I'm moving slowly towards not automatically buying eggs and having them in the house all the time. Um, I only drink plant-based milks most of the time. When I'm out and I'm grabbing a sandwich, the rule in my head is if there is a vegan sandwich available, I have to buy it. And when we go out for food, unless it's pizza, <laughs> if because the vegan pizzas, oh my God, somebody needs to be written up for that shit. That is a crime against humanity. Anyway, if I'm out and there is a vegan option on the menu, I need to pick it or at least seriously, seriously, seriously consider it. I guess my concept is learn meals, not rules, and moving every meal towards being less animal focused is the plan. When I learn a new meal that I can cook at home, which goddamn takes me a long time, I am not a natural chef, it, I usually try and make it a vegan dish so that I can, instead of being like, oh, I now have to eat vegan and then I get to like dinner time and I'm really hangry and I just need to make something and I have no idea how to make vegan food. I'm more trying to make my automatic, I'm exhausted, I just need to make something meals vegan in my head. And I'm learning that there's loads of conversations happening outside of the strict I am a clean vegan, you are a dirty meat eater <laughs> style debate where it's really about impact research around how if everybody just gave up meat and animal based products for breakfast and still had lunch and dinner <laughs> the same, how much of an impact that would make. When you give people affordable vegetarian and vegan options, how much more likely they are to buy them. And also how fucked up my idea of free range was as well, because I'm also like, Okay, but it reminds me of Never Let Me Go, where they keep these children in a really nice private school and they seem to have like pretty okay lives, but at the end of their life, spoiler, they fucking kill them. <laughs> I don't think anybody finished watching that film or reading that book and thought, well, at least they could run around in their nice private school garden before they were brutally sacrificed. I just think that I, past me, and probably a little bit present me, has a really fucked up relationship with the difference between need and want. And I realized that I really wanted to eat meat, but actually me specifically, me an individual, did not need to eat meat um, was a huge revelation. But these are just my feelings on the topic. Be honest and caring to each other in the comments below when you share your own thoughts and experiences. Um, I'm gonna leave loads of resources of things that I have been using to learn about all this, but I am here to be the visual record of somebody who is not perfect and is still working it the hell out. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Um, here are some more videos I think you might like if you liked this one. I have a whole series on positive panic and the climate, which is specifically designed to make you not panic, but still take action. It's here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and stick around because I'd like to see you here again. Frog snog.